Mike, obviously back in for the, the first week of, of pre-season officially, obviously the boys coming back in, obviously you've mentioned before the work kind of never stops for, for yourselves over the, the summer period though, but how is it to, to now kind of touch base back in the, the stadium at least? Good to be back. Um, second day, we've had two really good days um, straight in at the deep end, um, getting all of our principles and concepts across to the lads and as much information as we can, but also, you know, trying to manage their load, integrate back in, but hit them hard, which we have done, and it's been really good. Yeah, you mentioned a bit of a heavy start to things, really, obviously getting straight in, but for you, when you're kind of setting up pre-season schedules and and things like that, what makes that kind of the decision to just get pretty much straight into the thick of things? Obviously, different clubs have different approaches. Some like to kind of start things light and some are pretty much getting the, the balls out straight away and going straight to the football work. Yeah, the fact is that the boys come back in really good condition. Um, obviously, we, they've had an off-season programme we set and they've got targets to hit and they've all come back in, like I say, um, very fit and, and ready to go. So that really uh, helps us just to get back straight into the football, get the balls out, get the the joints and mobilities moving in the football related movements um, and yeah we've been straight in with 11 v 11s and like I say getting the principles and concepts. We've obviously made a few signings, a few new faces um, and they've integrated really well and the lads obviously from last season understand what we, we expect but we want to build, we want to, we want to improve and that's what we've been focused on. Yeah, and you mentioned the the new signings. Obviously, a few that are completely new to the club, but a few familiar faces from kind of last season. Whether that's loans turning into permanence or contracts just being extended past the end of the season. Obviously, Ed Francis, Callum Whelan, and, and Stephen Wern, the the main sort of three who came in towards the back end of last season, played a an important part in in keeping the the club up ultimately towards the end of the season. I mean, were there kind of conversations going on before the season finished, or was it pretty much a a thing of as, as soon th as soon as the season had, had kind of finished, you knew that, that those three were types of players that you were going to want to be bringing back in. Yeah, I think when they came in um, straight away, you can see their quality. And um, again, like we said, you know, recruitment never ends. You're always looking to improve. And um, obviously, the, yeah, straight away we knew those were players even before they came in. We we know the quality that they possessed. Um, and it was loose conversations. Obviously, when we got safe, we touched base on that. And um, then it's just negotiations go into the summer. Um, and yeah, we're, we're really, uh, really happy that we've been, been able to nail them down and get them on board. And it's really adding to the direction we're heading in. Yeah, and as well, in terms of familiar faces, obviously, Greg signing a, a new extended contract as well obviously longer serving player that's the tier at the minute but how key was that not only that you know new faces are coming in but lads who have been here for that kind of length of time are keen to stay as well i think he embodies everything that that we do here um you know he's longest serving i think he wants to take the mr gateshead title off clarky so uh but yeah everything about him um is is a humble hard working approach his honesty, um, you know, as a captain, he takes on criticism and he drives and he, he leads uh, by example. And yeah, we're delighted because he's a hell of a player. So we know obviously there's going to be the teams that were interested and that are interested. I know he's turned down um, opportunities to leave in the past and that's how committed he is. So delighted to uh, extend his contract. Touching on the, the new arrivals, obviously three completely new faces coming into the fold. Obviously someone who's experienced the division recently in, in Regan Booty coming in, obviously played against his last season for, for Maidstone and, and someone who, despite obviously Maidstone having a, a bit of a tough season as a, as a team, was someone who stats-wise was ranking quite highly towards the, the top end of the league in a lot of kind of forward passing statistics and things like that. So, I mean, what was it that you saw in him that made you want to bring him in? And also as well, how pleasing is it to get him in? Because no doubt he'll have had other suitors elsewhere around the division. Yeah, we identified him um, when we played against him as, as being one of their uh, threats. Um, say he's got one of a left foot and um, you could see that he was very comfortable playing in tight spaces as well. Um, his range of passing is something that we identified. Um, and yeah, like you say, he knows, the, he knows the level. He had a really good season in a difficult uh, situation, which um, is good for the individual. And we wanted to get all, as much of our business as we could done early doors because we know obviously our targets are, there's going to be more than us after him. So yeah, delighted again to, to get him in. I think he's a really good, um, addition and someone that's fitted in as a personality 
I think he's, he's got an eye for the coaching as well, so it's really good to uh, understand that. He's got that football intelligence and he can help to relay the message into the group as well. And as well on the sort of signings front, touching on Jordan Hunter at, at South Shields, obviously off the back of winning the, the Northern Premier League title with them last season, stepping up a, a couple of divisions to come here. Now, obviously, another player that kind of fits into the, the mould, really, in terms of being quite a young, energetic player who's, who's wanting to improve, wanting to kind of make that step up. And how is he going to kind of fit into the system as a whole? He fits the profile because he's young and he's hungry um, and he really wants to learn. You can see he's ambitious and uh, in his mentality, his mindset, his approach, um, he's probably the, the fittest lad in the group, um, or at least up there. And um, yeah, like I say, he, he knows the area. Um, he's obviously had success um, last season um, and we did as much due diligence as we can and everything just came back as, uh, yeah, he's an exceptional, an exceptional player. He's got a high ceiling. so. Again, we were we were uh, eager to to speak to him, um, and he would have had interest from from other parties. But glad to get that done because I think he's going to be someone that's going to excite the fans and give us a different uh, dimension as well. Give us an outlet. I think he will drift past players, and his uh, delivery into the box would be good. And hopefully, he can contribute on the golf front as well. And speaking of goals, obviously, in addition at the the top end of the pitch as well, in in Aidan coming from from Burtley just around the, the corner really, but uh, a different one in this, you know, hasn't played as, as high up as the other two perhaps, but the amount of goals I suppose he scored in the, the Northern League last season is pretty difficult to ignore when you are around the area, but as well for that, how often I suppose are you kind of looking around those sort of lower levels around the area? Obviously Buster's got an extensive kind of contact book of the, the kind of non-league region as well, but on him specifically as well, what is it that you've kind of seen in him that makes you feel like he's someone who isn't just going to score goals in the Northern League but has the potential to make that step up and do the same at this level as well? Well, his gold record, obviously that's the outstanding um, uh, part of it and um, you score goals of that magnitude at any level, you've obviously got something about you. Um, and yeah, Busty um, spoke to a few people and um, yeah, said like he's, he's got something about him and uh, obviously it's a big step, it's a big jump, but he came in to train and we sat and we, we chatted about it and he's got all of the enthusiasm and desire and you can see he's, he's a great lad fitted straight in with the group, um, which is a massive uh, area that we look at in terms of the personality and the blueprint and, and character. But yeah, physically, um, he's been working uh, incredibly hard in the off season, um, and when he trained with us, you could just see he's got he's got a really natural life for goal. One of the most uh, comfortable in front of goal I've seen so far. So, like I said, there's a lot of work for him to do. He knows that he's hungry. He's he's mentioned a few times he's just desperate to come in and get started. Um, might take him a you know a while to get up to speed in terms of full time and the standard, but he's come in and he's fit straight in and. Like I say, he's somebody that he's got a footballing brain as well. So, yeah, I'm excited for him. On the, the sort of side of, of bringing lads in, obviously you've had quite a bit of business, as we've touched on, done quite early on after the, the season finished. Obviously you had a bit of a later finish than the most teams in the division. But as well, has it been any different in terms of the process of, of bring, bringing players in this season? Has it been any easier given that... You know, when you compare it to, to last season, perhaps obviously you're stepping up to the National League, players at the level might have kind of looked and wondered if things didn't go your way at the start, whether things would kind of change in, in player styles and stuff like that. But now that they've had a full season, knowing what Gator are about, knowing what they're going to get into if they, if they join the club, has that made things any easier on your part and Busted's part in terms of getting players through the door? I think potentially, yeah. I think, um, like you say, from the first day me and Bust come in, there was big question marks um, over the club in terms of the stability um, and the structure and the infrastructure and um, the players and, and what level we're going to be operating at. And I think slowly but surely off the field with you know Neil and, and Bernard um, and the directors, they've been working uh, relentlessly to uh, make sure that we've uh, we're secure and um, we've got that platform for us to operate on the field um, and we've been doing that on the field we've been trying to improve every season um, obviously you could see how the different groups have evolved from the first group that we had in um, and the turnover of players but every season we're developing 
Um, and I think off the back of uh, winning the National League North, um, it, we knew it was always going to be a difficult season. Um, but I think the brand of football we play has is, is really caught the eye of a lot of lads and it really attracts them. And for us, it's about uh, developing that and making sure that it's not just a, a gated team that are happy to be in the National League. It's uh, someone that is, is a force and we're, we're improving and on every front. And I think that does help uh, with the recruitment because obviously playing against lads, we're identifying them. They're, they're essentially getting a feel with how we are, who we are, what type of attitudes we've got and, and how hard we work and the structure and how difficult it is to play against. And I think that yeah works in our favour when we uh, we try and attract those players. Yeah, and in terms of stepping into obviously a second consecutive season at the level now, obviously last season coming off the back of a, a sort of higher win in the league, but in uncharted territory in a sense, coming into a new division for a lot of the boys in the in the team. Do you feel better prepared at all, perhaps this time around? Um, I think uh, because we've had got the recruitment done um, and the the sense and the, the lessons that we learnt from last year, yeah, it gives you that feeling. But I think that just goes season on season. I think regardless of the outcome, another year um, of experience and learning um, stands you in good stead uh, because we will ultimately we, we're growing uh, and we're improving. So yeah, like I say, we're looking forward to it. We we've experienced a year at the level. Um, We've managed to recruit really well. It's going to be incredibly competitive and hopefully that will drive the standard up. It's going to be plenty of headaches for me, but that's why, I, why I'm here. That's what I want. They're good headaches and um, yeah, we're all looking forward to it. Yeah, and in terms of well, the, the potential of obviously more players coming through the door, obviously one that everyone's kind of speaking about at the minute on social media wise at the minute, the, the sort of goalkeeping situation. Obviously, I think everyone's forgetting there's already one goalkeeper here in Rob, although he hasn't played a game last season. He's very much still around the place. But what's the, the sort of situation on that front? Obviously, in the past, he's have explored loans quite a few times from, from a higher level and on different occasions have had sort of a permanent fixture goalkeeper wise but how are you looking at things at the minute obviously it's a very specific type of goalkeeper I suppose that you need to kind of play in your team yes yeah um, precisely um, I think like you say Monty's moved on and he was phenomenal for us what a great guy I wish him all the best and everything he's done for the club um, Rob, yeah, he's, he's here um, and he's been training. He's been uh, in and around it now for a while and um, he'll be there if we need, uh, need him and be called upon. But can't really divulge too much. We've, we've got our targets and uh, we're working um, very hard to uh, get somebody through the door, which um, we've identified, but it's a matter of time and, and um, hopefully you know, it'll be sooner rather than later. Yeah, and in terms of the, the pre-season schedule itself, obviously you mentioned before, it's just the, the kind of one week of preparation before you pretty much back into the actual thicker things in terms of matches. Obviously, Hebben up first on the, the Tuesday night away from home. And then when you look at the, the home fixtures, obviously three quite difficult tests for you in obviously Newcastle, a Premier League side, Sunderland, a championship side, getting to the playoff semi-finals last season and then Harrogate in League Two, of course, all three you played in pre-season last year as well, but how important is it for you to get those kind of tests in pre-season to, I don't know, set you in good stead for the actual season coming up as well? It's massive, yeah. I think, like I say, you know, having Sunderland, Newcastle um, and Harrogate, you know, three three big clubs and um, you know, hopefully we'll have really good turnouts um, uh, and it'll help us financially, but on the field, obviously the first one, Heaven, which has been a consistent one. Um, you know, we're, we're breeding, uh, blooding the lads into the concepts and the principles, um, but ultimately it's about the 45 minutes and getting it inside your legs. We can run as much as we want around the track and on the, the training field, but it's, uh, it's games that really, uh, where we, we improve our fitness. But yeah, we want the biggest test we can. We want to we'll test ourselves. The lads, you know, they'll be thriving at playing at Sunderland and Newcastle again in front of a you know really healthy crowd. Um, and yeah, we want to we want to go toe to toe. And and the way we're going to approach the the league, we want to approach these games. There's no no difference about it. It's 11 v 11, and 
we're excited to play against the best players in the world um, and to really put ourselves under pressure and make sure that we, uh, we are courageous and we do what we want to do and play the way we want to play. Yeah, and, and focusing on the, the Sunderland and, and Newcastle games in, in particular, really obviously two high quality opponents in terms of there being a, a bit of a gap but in terms of kind of, you know, the, the league pyramid between, between yourselves and those two, obviously. But whenever supporters and, and managers and things look at pre-season beforehand, it's always a bit of a debate of how much do the results play into things versus just gaining the fitness. But what's the, the sort of focus on those two in, in particular? Are you looking to tw- try and, and kind of go a bit toe to toe and test yourselves on the ability front or is just that building fitness against you know opponents who not only are the high quality you know the some of the fittest around as well is it a bit of a two-pronged front on that really uh well no not really i feel as though the the objective is to um narrow down our principles and our concepts and if we're we're executing those uh principles the way we want to then the fitness will come so obviously it's pre-season and we've got to increase and maximise um, their aerobic and anaerobic capacities, but it's about making sure that the first game of the season is the most important and everybody is as, as well-versed and um, drilled, detail-oriented as they can, and that's what these games are for. Obviously, um, testing yourself against the best players in the world, is, there's no better way of doing it. You're going to be under huge pressure and scrutiny um, with the crowds, but that's exactly why we do it. We, we want as much pressure as we can, it's a privilege. So it's about making sure that tactically, um, physically, mentally, we're in the best preparation for the first game and it starts in the pre-season friendlies. Yeah, and on an individual front for yourself, sort of playing-wise, obviously still played a, a handful of games last season. Is it still kind of operating under the same sort of plan this season that, you know, you, you're there if needed? Obviously, you did get an injury towards the, the back end of last season as well. So I suppose, how are you you're faring with that at the minute? Uh, yeah, still without Crucia. So uh, nothing's changed on that front. Um, but yeah, no, like, um, you know, functional, fully happy and healthy. So um, my focus is, is going to be mainly on the managing. Um, but whilst I'm, uh, I've got some boots and shin pads, then yeah, always uh, available for selection.